So I just want to take a moment and go over this diagram so we can talk about metamorphic facies and how it's tied to plate tectonics. So remember, metamorphism occurs because there's either a change in heat, a change in pressure, or a change in both. Now as we've discussed in class, right, plate tectonics can easily create changes in heat and pressure. So let's take a look at where we can see this. If I look at thermal metamorphism, okay, thermal metamorphism is obviously dealing with heat. So here we see, obviously this is A, so our thermal is high heat, low pressure. So where are we going to find stuff like this, right? That's our contact metamorphism. So remember, contact metamorphism is where I have an igneous body, right? Maybe it's a batholith sitting in here, and it's exuding a lot of heat, right? Well, that heat is going to metamorphose the rocks right around it. But you notice I didn't mention anything about pressure, because this is a low to no pressure environment. Now let's move on to our second one. Our second one is a volcanic arc. So remember, volcanic arc is created where I have subduction. Okay, so my ocean plate is subducting beneath another ocean, making island arcs, or it's subducting underneath a continent, and it's making a magmatic arc. But either way, right here, we have high temperature, which should make sense. We've got melted rock, but this also has to be kind of medium pressure. Right, because I've got a subducting piece of plate here. If I'm subducting something, obviously my pressure has to be increasing. Okay, so said volcanic arc is going to be mainly a temperature-driven process. Now let's look at our next one, collisional mountain belt. So here, collisional mountain belt, I have two continents that are colliding, and when they collide, right, they create mountains. So as you notice here, the pressure is, or the temperature is starting to drop, but the pressure is increasing. Okay. So, in something like a collisional mountain belt, really, we're going to have relatively high pressure and probably medium to high temperature. So, in our collisional mountain belts, this is where I expect to see foliated rocks. When I start to have this pressure driven system, that's when I'm going to see foliation definitely occur. Now let's look at our next one. This is our stable continent. So a stable continent, this is just talking about burial. So if I have a rock here, over time it's going to get buried by other rocks that are getting deposited on top. So that means, right, I'm going to probably be in that medium temperature, medium pressure range. So I might see foliation. This is where I can see things easily change from slate to phyllite to schist to gneiss as I go deeper. Okay. So burial we can find happening all over in the continent. And then the fifth one, the accretionary prism. Remember the accretionary prism, that's the accretionary wedge that occurs if I have a continent and then I have ocean floor subduction. Remember this scrapes off the sediment that sits there. So since it's scraping off the sediment, this is a very low temperature situation. But, because this is moving and it's constantly pushing that wedge into the continent, this is a much higher pressure range. So I might find some foliation in there. It all depends on how long that material stays in the accretionary wedge. So this diagram is actually incredibly important because it ties together both plate tectonics with metamorphism. So you can see where we get our non-foliated rocks, so down here we're going to get non-foliated, maybe over here we're going to get non-foliated. But in this medium, that's probably where we're going to mainly find our foliated rocks. So hopefully you can see the importance in understanding a diagram like this because it ties the whole thing together.